All right, hey everybody, it's Dr. Mack here again today. I am with a former student of mine, Justin Bush. Okay. <laughs> and um, basically I'm talking with Justin today because I wanted you to know that you can actually get a job, a really good job, as a geographer. I've known Justin for about 12 years now and he is now working with invasive species in the state of Washington. I'm going to let Justin talk to you about what he does and what are the issues, perhaps even what some of the specific species are. So, Great, yeah. great. Thank, thanks for this opportunity. I, always, I identify as a geographer through my, my undergrad and graduate work and um, if people ask me what I do, am I a biologist, how did I get into this? No, I, I'm a geographer first and foremost and I always will be. And, um, and I'll try to explain why I think that that's beneficial in what I do and in my world. Um, so my name is Justin Bush, I work for the Washington State Recreation and Conservation Office. My role within that agency uh, is to be the coordinator of the Washington State Invasive Species Council. So as a, as a council, the legislature for our state realized that there's a common issue, invasive species, so non-native, insect, animal, pathogen, any organism that uh, historically has not been found in Washington State, it gets transported here and now creates damages uh, to our environment, our agriculture, our natural resources, to our economy. Um, this is a, something that all agencies need to be thinking about and we need to work together in a coherent way to be fit, effective and efficient in stopping that spread and, and preventing those impacts to our, uh, our agriculture and to our, our citizens. And so uh, across all agencies, there's 22 different agencies within Washington, we all get together as a council to work together to implement a strategic plan. So, uh, so right there we get, yeah. we've already got some biogeography going on, and we've got some political geography trying to get all these different agencies going. Um, before we get too far, where did you do your graduate work? Portland State University. Uh -huh. Yeah, sure. great, great school, great program. Uh, I was very close to finishing my program <laughs> and then accepted a position with the University of Texas thinking, oh great, I can somehow a staff earn a master's uh -huh. and then a, a PhD at a reduced rate uh -huh. and full-time jobs get the better of yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you can still go back and finish it. I, I'm planning to at some point, yeah. <laughs> Keep going. So, <laughs> uh, so, um, Invasive species, the trick uh, is to prevent them fully, um, and then also to find the very first one and pull it, trap it, stop it from spreading. And the way that we always try to explain it is like a lightning strike. So lightning strikes uh, a lit, you know, a grassy field, that fire starts, immediately people fly in with helicopters and trucks, and they jump on it immediately and they stomp it out before it can spread. And the idea is that if it gets too big, we can't stomp it out. There's no, no possible way to do that with human resources and the amount of money that we have. It's the same idea for invasive species. Mm -hmm. And what a lot of what we think about is why I feel like geography is a great fit for invasive species is because <clears throat> with uh, one very strange circumstance that involves a natural disaster, typically we don't see species moving from one continent to another without some kind of human interaction. Mm -hmm. So there's a vector, international shipping, travel, all sorts of things. Humans are a direct path to bringing something to the United States. And then once something reaches the US, humans are often moving the species. So it jumps onto our cars, um, and starts to spread along our roadways, or maybe people think it's fun to fish or hunt for something, and so they try to create an opportunity and help the spread. And so uh, to be effective in this, you need to know about biology, and kind of you know the how to stop invasive species, but you also need to think about human interaction with the natural environment, which is the perfect intersection with geography. And then you know always if you're going to implement a plan, you need a good map. So we use maps <laughs> and, and modeling frequently in what we do. So there you go. Remember some of those themes of geography: human environment interaction. Think about more humans, so there's going to be more humans to interact as our transportation system increases its velocity and the amount of international and intercontinental transport, there's more opportunities for organisms to move and survive the move. Um, and these organisms are non-native. They might not have any predators where they arrive and they were perfectly fine, maybe even considered beneficial back home. And when they arrive at the new location, they're really detrimental and they kill off other species that we like, somehow or another, they are an economic problem, cost, 
for us. I talk frequently about the locational cost, locational benefit when we talk about economic geography and our invasive species are one classic example of that. Thank you Justin, any last words? I think it's worth mentioning that we all have a role to play in stopping invasive species and, and it's worth noting as you travel through your adventures in life, invasive species are two-way street. So not only are we receiving invasive species, but if we're traveling, we could be bringing something from our home to a new land. And so just be prepared, know what you should and shouldn't bring, always clean off your boots and your equipment, and um, preserve the places that we all value. I guess I should say, before we go, we, we were generalized in talking about invasive species. What are a couple, three, four that are especially critical here in Washington State? Sure, well the number one thing, uh, we group two species together because they're very closely related, quagga and zebra mussels, also known as invasive mussels or dracaenid mussels. <clears throat> These are freshwater mussels, uh, they're not yet found in Washington. They were introduced to the Great Lakes in the 1980s with ballast water as a contaminant of international ships, and from that time they've spread south, north, and west, um, hitching on recreational boats, kayaks, seaplanes, um, all sorts of different conveyances. Um, and what is super important about this is because we don't have them, um, there's a huge impact to Washington in our agricultural water systems and in our hydroelectric dams. And so these species, uh, this, these dracaenid mussels, essentially one, um, one shell grows on the outside of another. So over time, if there's a small dam in your pipe, it'll clog something within a hydroelectric dam, for example, kind of like a clogged artery. And these systems were not designed 50 to 100 years ago um, to be pipes snaked out or easily cleaned. And that's very expensive and we know it's going to cost us a lot of money that we don't have. So zebra mussels are the cholesterol of our waterways. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There you go, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this. Justin Bush, thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs>